The T100 returns after its unofficial mid-season break and the series is hotting up as the athletes head to Ibiza for the fifth race in the series. With Dubai being announced as the grand final, it means there's one less race in the series, so this race just became even more important for athletes trying to win the series, but also for those athletes trying to finish in the top 10 of the standings to earn a contract for 2025. Of the 20 contracted athletes, we only have 14 of them racing, with Sam Long opting to skip the travel to Europe, and instead he's racing Ironman Chattanooga on Sunday. It'll be interesting to see if he's able to pick up an early world championship slot to Nice. Then we've got Magnus Ditlev, Rudy Von Berg and Ben Knut who are all focused on Kona and Jason West and Clement Mignon have withdrew through injury. Of the 14 remaining athletes, we've got five of them racing in Kona. Sam Laidlow, Daniel Backegaard, David McMee, Bradley Weiss and Leon Chevalier. Laidlow and Backegaard are both coming off podiums in London, so we'll have to see if their world champs prep has had a detrimental effect on their performance in Ibiza. With 14 athletes racing, it means we have six wildcard slots on offer. Now, there was a wildcard given to Carl Smith, but he's just announced he won't be racing as he's been dealing with illness. That could be significant in the series standings. A third straight podium here would have had him leading the series. However, he will get another chance in Vegas, before that grand final in Dubai. So moving to the wildcards, we'll see racing on Saturday. First, we've got Yuri Kulin. He was on fire early in the season as he spent the winter focused on getting a wildcard slot and showed he was overlooked for a contract. Fourth in Miami and that crazy win in Singapore, but he did struggle in London coming in ninth. Next, we've got Mika Nu, another wildcard that has impressed so far this year with two top six finishes and he's coming off a dominant win at 70.3 Zalamsi that moved him up to 7th in the PTO World Rankings. Next, we've got Antonio Benito Lopez. He's won all four of his races so far this year, including Ironman Vittoria. He's a front-pack swimmer and a rapid runner, but the question will be, can he stick around on the bike to be a threat? He's also building towards racing in Kona. Then we've got Kasper Stepniak, one of the late additions to the start list. He's coming off 4th at 70.3 Tallinn, and 7th at Ironman Frankfurt. Solid results for back-to-back -back weekends of racing. Like Lopez, he's also preparing for world champs in Kona. Josh Amberger, he struggled a bit this year, missing out on Kona qualification as he wasn't able to pick up a slot in any of his three Ironmans. His 10th in Singapore was his best result over this distance. And finally, we've got Maximilian Spell. This will be his first race in the T100, and he made a name for himself at the start of the season battling with Sam Long on the bike at Oceanside and St. George, but since then he's struggled with two DNFs, 19th at 70.3 Talon, but he's coming off a 4th place finish at Challenge San Remo just last weekend. The men's swims in the T100 feel like they've become less and less significant, with the front pack becoming bigger and bigger each race, with pretty much 19 athletes coming out of the water together in London. Ibiza represents a different swim to many of the courses we've already seen, San Francisco was the only other ocean swim so far, and any impact the chop had was mitigated by that current, meaning everyone came out of the water close together. However, in Ibiza, it could be a swim where we finally see groups get split up. It looks like it could be windy on the day causing some chop, which aids the stronger swimmers, and expect to see Aaron Royal and Rico Bogan as the main aggressors. However, when we look at this field in detail, the pure strength of swimmers is just crazy. Well over half the field will swim front pack in any race they do. So stringing them out in one group, it just makes it easier for the weak swimmers to latch on and not get dropped. One thing I've wondered is if the T100 can try and change the swim courses to make the field split up a bit more. We tend to have these long rectangles with long straights, which I think makes it harder to break away. Would having an additional turn earlier in the swim lead to more gaps? Let me know what you think. I've split the field into the typical front pack swimmers, then swimmers we typically associate with being in the chase pack in normal races, and then a third tier for Leon Chevalier, who for me is the weakest swimmer in the field. Given how big that first tier of swimmers is, I wouldn't be surprised if we see those first two tiers come together. Margerier, Newt, and Coolan have all managed to swim front pack at T100 events before, and Funk did in London as well. So that could be a group of 19, and then Chevalier could have another good swim like he did in London and latch on the back, making it the whole field coming out together, which is crazy. 
I think this is part of the reason why we see more drafting in the men's races. Now, obviously, part of it is down to it not being officiated correctly and the men blatantly not adhering to the race ranger system. But they are definitely in a harder situation when you basically have the whole field coming out of the swim together and then trying to ride 20 metres apart. And it was especially banned in London because of that narrow technical course. Onto the bike, and this is where the last few races have been so frustrating to watch. Lots of drafting, which I'm hoping is going to be better in Ibiza, given the amount of criticism it's gotten. The course is different from the European Open last year. It's two big laps, then a half lap, which makes a change from the eight lap courses we've been seeing a lot of. Based on plugging the course into Garmin, it looks like there'll be around 450 to 500 meters of elevation. There's around a 1k, 4% climb, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough to split up the group. If the field is coming out of the water together, then it could take a bit of a time for the packs to form. But I see Margerier, Newt and Laidlow as the most aggressive riders. And we can probably throw Martin Van Riel in there as well, given how he attacked that San Francisco course. If Van Riel was racing in London, I don't think he would have let Laidlow get away like he did. But given how Sam ran, I don't think anyone will let him get away again without some serious effort. It feels like he is constantly underestimated and it's about time the field learns its lesson. However, for any of them to get away, it will take a big attack. I can't see Bogan, Brownlee, Funk letting groups get away without a fight. So we could see big groups stay together for a while until the attacks come. Van Riel is probably the best runner out of that front group so he may be less concerned about it being a running race. We're still waiting to see what Brownlee can do. His performance back in Miami showed real promise, but it just hasn't clicked since then, and he was unlucky with a puncher in London. He was sitting comfortable to win that group until that point. Could we finally see a big performance from him? Now, Margeria is probably the most likely to look to break away. We've seen him attack out of the water in Miami, as well as in Milwaukee last year. If he can get two or three others, then that's a group that could stay away. Otherwise, it will purely be a running race. Even though Van Riel may be comfortable letting it go down to the run, I can also see him relish the idea of a breakaway. I think he just loves hard racing. And if we look back at the European Open last year, that front pack stayed together for a long amount of time until Detlev let that gap go and then bridged across himself. I think that shows just how hard it is to manufacture a breakaway, but with Lado and Margerie, they're two of the strongest riders in the field, so we could see them get a gap. Whether there's a breakaway or not, I think these front athletes will be close together coming off the bike. Even if a group gets a gap, it may only be around 60 seconds. With Carl Smith out, I'm interested to see who becomes the aggressor on the run. I'm not sure if we'll see Van Riel attack early. I think he prefers to bide his time. On the opposite end, we've seen Bogan throw attacks at all stages of the run, so he could be one to watch out for. Mika Newt was really impressive in Zelan C, so he has that form and confidence coming to Ibiza, so I'm expecting him to challenge for the podium. These fields are just so deep now. Over the four races, we've had four different winners and ten different athletes on the podium. Madness. However, I'm predicting we have our first two-time winner with Martin Van Riel taking the win ahead of Mika Newt in second getting his first T100 podium with Sam Laidlow in third backing up his performance from London. And then I think Yuri Kulin will bounce back with fourth here and I've got Mattis Margerio rounding out the top five in his return from injury. These races are getting harder and harder to predict so let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Thank you.